Hey, what's going on everybody? Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, y'all know I don't really make videos and all of that. But I had to do this today. Okay. Uh, I was sitting here and I was watching a video that was made by uh, a pastor somewhere. Saying that uh, he had just received a call from a friend of his about uh, some musicians that he had referred to this pastor. He said that he had uh, he would never uh, allow him to refer another musician to him because of uh, you know he's he's sent him about five different musicians and all five of these musicians uh, when they would come to church for service they would be high or drunk uh, being a musician. I can say that um, I've been there, okay? Uh, in my younger years, um, I too used to uh, show up to services and rehearsals high. I ain't never been drunk. That's just, that's too much. That's too much. Um, and I can be open and honest with y'all. You know, hey, at the end of the day, nobody has a heaven or hell to put me in. Thank God. Amen. Uh, but the reason for it, it was not a thing of disrespecting God's house. It wasn't a thing of, uh, oh, I, I have to be high to sound my best. It wasn't it, that wasn't the case. The case was. I felt I needed to be high. To come in to a place where. I couldn't really pour out my heart of worship because people were expecting me to just perform and not minister. For a long time, the church caused uh, or dealing with the business of the church uh, caused me to become very hard hearted in my worship. And, you know, when folks get to dealing with you as a musician pertaining to money, you know, it's not a thing of, okay, you can come in and pour out your heart and really worship and lead the people into worship and really set the atmosphere. No, that's not what we pay you for. We pay you to do what we want you to do. Okay? If we say uh, we want you to play and shout for four hours, straight shout music, that's what we're paying you for. That's it. If we pay you to uh, dance like a monkey... Uh, on top of the organ while playing with your feet, that's what we paying you for. So for musicians, it's very hard to deal with uh, not being able to really be creative how you want to be and really open up and really set the atmosphere. Um, later on in this video, he called these musicians, and I know that they're singers that do this as well, uh, he called them idiots. Um, for me, just for me, this is my own opinion. Pastors that have people that sit in their congregations that they know get high. They know deal with alcoholism. They know deal with uh, popping pills and uh, suicidal thoughts and things like that. The pastors, I say, are the true idiots. And call it for what it is. Uh, because you know these people sit in your church. But as long as they give an offering, as long as they give in a service that you need, you know, and they continue to come, you don't say nothing. You don't help them out of their issues and their problems. Clearly, there's something else going on. As a musician, I know other musicians, you know what I'm saying? And I've been there myself. I won't even say other musicians. I'll say myself, okay? I know what it is to go into a place where I got a lot going on at home. And it's hard to draw that line to say, okay, I just got done arguing with somebody at my house about uh, maybe I ain't doing enough or I'm always gone all the time or uh, I got equipment, you know, all over the place, whatever, you know, the life of a musician, whatever. Then I got to come into a church where I can't be creative. I got to, uh, 
you know, uh, do what the choir members tell me to do because the church is run by the deacons and I got to do what they tell me to do. And if I ain't doing what the pastor want me to do, I got to do what he wants. It's pretty much working in a, uh, a corporation and not a church. Uh, I want y'all pastors to know this. I need you all to stop using the term career to musicians. Understand that in order to have a career, okay, a career, there's a difference between having a career and a job. I have a career and I have a hobby, which is music. My career is transportation, okay? That's, that's what helps me see, you know, in, in, you know, national average, you know, if you have a career, you should be making about fifty-two to $62,000 a year. That's a career. As a musician, if you are not making fifty or plus thousand dollars a year, that's not a career. Stop using career. Oh, this is your career. No, it's not. No, it's not. The national average of a line of uh, or the line of poverty is about twenty two thousand dollars a year. If you're making less than twenty two thousand dollars a year, that is not your career. Pastors, stop manipulating musicians to believe, oh, it's either uh, you're going to get high or you're going to uh, let go of your career. That ain't their career. If you ain't, if you ain't doing nothing but kicking out 200 and 250 a week, that ain't no career. Okay? Stop the foolishness. Um, if you see that people have an issue... If you really have a true heart for God's people, you reach out to them and see what's going on in their life. Um, I was talking to someone yesterday and they were saying that uh, on a national average, actually on a global average, there's more people sitting inside of religious uh, uh, temples and churches and mass and, you know, all the different places of worship that actually come in dealing with uh, a higher uh, rate of suicide than people that don't attend any kind of religious setting. I can be open and say, I know this to be true. I know what it is to, uh, to stand somewhere and leave out of a, a very frustrating rehearsal or a very frustrating service and just say, you know what? If I had a gun, I'd, I'd, I'd do it and just take myself out. Depression is very real on levels that some people just, if you've never gone through it, understand that you wouldn't understand. But if you've gone through it, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? Especially when you're dealing with church folks and they money. It's rough. It's rough. So before, you know, some of these pastors get to amen and this brother that's, coming down on these musicians, there's some greater issues going on in people's lives, you know, especially as, uh, as men, especially men. I know a lot of extremely talented young men and musicians in the state of Michigan, you know, um, that was just being the typical musician and you know, being the typical musician creates life's problems and issues. And because you don't have someone in your life to mentor you properly, to show you how to deal with certain things. Some of them didn't have men in their life to show them, hey, son, this is what you do. This is what you don't do. This is what you want to do. This is what you don't want to do. So they have to deal with the consequences of being what we know as the typical musician, okay? Um, and it, it, it creates issues for them. So if you see these young brothers, these talented uh, musicians and singers and directors, you know, that you know fight every day and deal with uh, character issues and they deal with uh, uh, just, you know, maybe dealing with alcoholism or being addicted to some type of drug, or maybe even some people struggle, even in the church, with homosexuality. You know, we know this. We know what's going on. We'll see it and then turn around and go right home after service. Yeah, you know, he was up there throwing his 
throwing his hips all over the altar and all of that, shaking and all of that. And we talk about him like a dog. But what are we doing to help them? Are we embracing them to say, listen, I know you have a gift and a calling on your life. I know this. But what are we doing to help them and say, let me really show you the way of God? No, no. But some people just want to use their talent and ability to help grow their church. And then as soon as they get it to a level that they want it to be, oh, we no longer need your services because so-and-so then came on over. Praise the Lord. God has sent someone else to take us to a new level. The devil is a liar. You use their talent and ability to get to where you want it, and then you, you just let them go and let them be, and which causes more church hurt. This causes uh, musicians and singers and directors to just be hurt and to be in the church just numb. Numb to the spirit. Numb to people that's coming in broken, that through music and their ability can be healed and brought out of whatever they're going through. You've used them. And you've created a, a bigger monster. So I challenge all of these pastors that's jumping on the bandwagon with this brother. I challenge you to take some time to get to know the people that's working for you. Don't just treat it like it's, it's you know, oh, we hire musicians, we fire musicians. Oh, well, it's a corporation. Where's where's the Christianity? Where's the uh, religious, the real religious part of that? I don't care if you're Christian, Muslim, whatever. Where's the concern for people? Where's the humanity? Y'all, um, let me know what y'all think about this. I know it's a long video or whatever, but y'all got time. Don't worry about it. Y'all be blessed. Let me know what y'all think.